Now, I just kind of wanted to address something. Or a Mars bar. Oh, God. No, Mars bar is not the same category. That's uh, that's apples and oranges, I'm afraid. Well, Mars bar is awesome. Mars not the same Don't thing. <laughs> Excellent singing, dear. I wanted to show you something that is really, really, really cool. I will probably mention this again, but forgive me, this needs saying twice. I'm gonna find Saturday really, really difficult. Hi guys, Re here from mummyofour.com. Welcome back to another weekly vlog. I just got back from my first B&M trip, which was fun. First time since the children went back to school, went for a little wander, found some Halloween bits. That'll be a separate video. I filmed the come shop with me bit, and now I've got all this stuff on the floor in my office, but I'm not sure I'm gonna have time to film the whole bit before I go and get the children from school. So all this stuff, as much as it upsets me, I might just have to shut the door on it. Cause not only have I got to go and get the children from school today, but the children have got friends coming back. So I just don't have time to, to deal with, with all this. So um, I just kind of wanted to address something. Um, by the time this goes out, I'm not even sure when this is going out, but at the time, the queen has very sadly passed away and it's before the funeral. So it's in this time of national mourning. And I talked about it on Instagram briefly and I just sort of wanted to, to say it over here as well, even though by the time you see this, it might be a bit late, I don't know. It, it's really sad to hear about the queen passing. Obviously she served us for a really long time and it's especially sad to think of her family having to mourn her, but also having to really put on a brave face for everybody. That must be so difficult for them. And I think from what I've heard from my DMs, my comments from you guys, it's brought up a lot of stuff for people about losing people in their own family so people are not only sad about the queen but kind of it's dredged up other feelings for people so as always when things happen in the world i wonder what i should do how i should kind of handle it i guess i think the conclusion i always end up coming back to is that i want you guys to know that it's not that i'm not thinking about it and i don't care because i i am and i do but i don't feel like this is a news channel I don't think you come here for the news and that's not what I'm here to bring you. I think you come here for chit chat and hauls and vlogs and sort of an escape from the heaviness of the world really. So that's why if you've seen my Instagram and things, I've been posting chit chatty, normal fluffy content because if you're not in the mood for that kind of stuff, then you know, feel free to like take a break, don't watch whatever. But I think a lot of people when there is a lot of heaviness in the world need a little bit of normality and I'm, I'm just talking from experience here. I need fluffy, normal stuff to watch and read and listen to, to escape from the heaviness of the world when there is heaviness in the world. So that's why my normal content's been going out as normal. So I just thought I'd put that out there really. Now I'm absolutely starving. So I'm gonna go and um, grab myself some toast to eat uh, before going to get the children from school. Oh, have I got time to film that? No, because if I film that, I'm not gonna have time to eat anything and I'm starving. So. Eating is going to be priority over filming or all of the filming for that whole video is just going to be noises of my tummy rambling and nobody wants to listen to that. I do indeed feel about a million times better having eaten something. Okay, very quickly, because I do have to go and get the children from school. I will probably mention this again in the B&M Come Shop With Me and haul video, the haul video that I'm gonna have to film tomorrow and the video that I think will come out after this one. But forgive me, this needs saying twice. Okay, this, this is important. Look what I found in B&M. Opal fruits. Now, my experience at the checkout in B&M, I'm gonna tell you, it made me feel pretty darn old. So I'm paying at B&M, as you do, you're like, and you came in for one thing, and they're like, ha ha, everyone's like that. So opal fruits come out of the trolley onto the conveyor belt, I'm like, to this, uh, what I can now see is a lot younger than me, young boy. I'm like, opal fruits, they called them opal fruits again. To which his response were, what did they change them from? And I'm like, Oh dear. So that means I'm officially old. So for the people that do not know what I'm talking about, either because they're not from the UK or because you're clearly a lot younger than me, opal fruits were what they were originally called. And then, I can't remember when they did it, but they changed opal fruits to Starburst. And they used to come in, not just these bags, these would be like the bags you bought in theatres or cinemas or whatever, but they'd be in like a tube, like a tube of chew it, like, like a pack of Chewits or Frutella or something like that. And then they changed them to Starburst. So that's what they've been for years and years. 
recently Starburst, but I think anyone of my age still refers to them as Opal Fruits, you know, like, like the Marathon Snickers thing. If I'm honest, I have always known them as Snickers, so they must have changed to Marathon before I was ever buying chocolate for myself. So what I need you to do in the comments for me is let me know, do you remember when they were called Opal Fruits the first time? And how old are you? And then maybe we can figure out when they changed from Opal Fruits to Starburst. And if you're not from the UK, have you ever heard of either Opal Fruits or Starburst? Because I don't know if they've made them overseas or if it's a UK thing. But that is my shocking moment for the day that has made me feel ancient by the boys interviewing me in B&M who had never heard of Opal Fruits. So I just dropped the children in school and I've just uh, moved this little sofa around in the living room so that I can sit here in front of this nice big window and I'm gonna bring all of the shopping I did in B&M yesterday into here and film the whole portion of the video. But I thought we'd have a little chat first. Pick the children up from school yesterday. The girls had some friends over. They're friends with sisters. So there's a few little girls in Zara's class that have got sisters in Bella's class and they're all friends together, which is sweet. So bring them home and Zara's little friend's like, Zara didn't have a snack today in school. Did we not pack a snack? Because the children, um, choose a snack every morning. If you've seen my morning routine videos, um, they have um, a snack for during the day in school, then they have school dinners, and then they, they have another snack for, for after school. And then obviously the children, I'm trying to empower them to, to do this themselves, but Zara's only little, so I kind of make sure that she does it. So it's like, um, I'm pretty sure we did pack your snacks, Zara. Um, did you tell your teacher we didn't? I went into a bag and there it was in the box where it had been put that very morning. So Zara had told her teacher that I was a bad mummy and hadn't packed anything. <laughs> Isn't it fun when your children drop you in it like this? Anyway, I'm gonna bring all this stuff in now, um, film the whole part of the video, um, and then I've got just quite a lot of like ad mini stuff to do. I've got lots of um, brand work bits and pieces. There's just so much, I don't think people realize how much goes on behind the scenes. I get lots of emails saying, you know, will you work on this, will you work on that? And most of it I end up saying no to because I only want to talk about products and services that I kind of believe in because I don't want to be sharing things with you guys that I don't like, use, believe in, you know, because that just wouldn't be authentic to me. And obviously I want you guys to trust what I'm saying. Otherwise, what is the point? What is the point? So there's a lot of toing and froing that goes on behind the scenes before things can go live. And then often like I filmed one piece of content for Instagram that has to go off to the brand. They check things, check the spellings are right, check that all the music, they're happy with it, copyright or whatever. Um, and then that has to get signed off before it can get posted. Cause obviously you don't wanna be posting brand work with any things that aren't like correct information about the product or whatever in it. So it all has to be checked. So there's just such a lot of toing and froing before things go live. And when I first started, I really felt like things had to be like done in the moment to feel like they were going out at the same time and they were in real time, otherwise it didn't feel authentic. And I've realized that I just can't do that. So now I kind of just, if I'm putting up brand work on Instagram, I just say, well, I've got this going up. Obviously it wasn't filmed today. Um, and because that's just not how it works. In an ideal world, that would be how it would work. I would just film stories live and in the moment, but in practice, I can't have these things work. There's just so much more to and froing behind the scenes that I don't think many people know about. I don't know, maybe um, I have thought about doing like a behind the scenes of all that kind of thing. Don't know if that'd be something you guys are interested in, in kind of what actually goes on, what I actually do for my job other than filming and editing. Let me know if that'd be something you'd be interested in, uh, in a, a lot more behind the scenes kind of video. Anyway, let's um, bring all the shopping in, set up my other camera and get going. Okay, filmed that, and in true fashion have made a terrible mess. Um, so my next job is to take the footage from the big camera, which I'm still always experimenting. I've been doing this for years now. I started 
vlogging, vlogging, whatever, in 2017, I did take a break from YouTube, as in I just was like, wow, YouTube's a lot of work. Um, so I didn't pick YouTube up properly until 2019, so beginning of 2019. Since then, I've been putting out three videos a week consistently. But I'm still tweaking settings, learning all the time. So for example, changing things like frame rate and video quality and stuff. So I just filmed that on my big camera. I changed the frame rate to 25 frames per second and in 4K, which may not mean anything to anyone at all actually, but um, supposed to be better quality. And um, some of it I felt like I'm a bit worried that was kind of the focus wasn't as good. So I don't know if I've knocked on the other settings on my camera or what, but I'm now gonna do what I normally do, which is dump this footage to transfer onto my computer. Cause while the footage is like transferring, there's not much else I can do computer wise. And then I can tidy up all this mess while that's happening. And then I can actually work on editing all of this. So my uh, trolley bags need to go back in the boot of my car. I don't do a great deal of actual supermarket shopping, although I was gonna film, wasn't I? Like a little come shop with me in the supermarket series. And I went to Tesco's and I got told off. <laughs> but that was with my big, big camera. I think I had a gimbal as well, trying to make super smooth footage. So maybe I'll take this little teeny camera and try that again. Anyway, long story short, I don't normally do supermarket shopping. I normally get it delivered. Um, so I mostly use these if I'm going to like, like a B&M home bargains kind of place. Um, but I am tempted when we get back from our next trip to do some come shop with me videos with my small camera so I don't get told off. It's funny because like I film all the time in places like B&M. I've never once been told off. I've only ever been told off that once in Tesco. Anyway, would you like to see some come shop with me in the supermarket videos? Let me know in the comments. Look. Look what I found. You're old enough to remember these, aren't you? <laughs> the boy in the checkout in B&M did not know what they were. I was always confused because they sort of... What were they called? Ones before? No, well, these Star were Opal Fruits. No, they were Opal Fruits first. I know that, but what they... But then they were Starburst, Starburst recently, but yeah. Like, I don't know, how old was I when Starburst, they changed to Starburst? I don't like, know. not a kid, a teenager? I, I, I don't know. Then, so I don't know. <laughs> anyway, they're opal fruits again. So open them up. Let's see if they're the same. Open them up. Or oh, a taster. Well, I don't know. We could do a taster. So they changed the things. Oh. I don't think they changed the product, did they? I think they I just rebranded them. And what's the. Ah, oh, look, they cut. They say it on it, too. They say opal fruits on the thingy. I can't remember what they were like in the original. I mean, probably the same. They used to be in a tube. They're not like a tube, like, like chew it. They probably still do that. This yeah. is like the bumper bag, which is turning. It does say limited edition, so maybe they're only like temporarily renamed them for us excited people. Same? Mm. Same Don't as know. these? Don't know, you're going to have to eat the rest of the box, <laughs> the rest of the bag yeah. to check. Try all the flavours. Mmm, that's one way. I can't even open this with one hand. Mmm. So, opal fruits. Are we recommending opal fruits? Are they getting your seeds? I don't know. I, don't really, I never really liked Starburst. Didn't know nope. the name. Yeah, it's because they're opal fruits. Yeah. Um, but I gotta say, I prefer opal fruits to you. What do you like? You like the frutella things. They're not nearly as nice. Oh yeah, frutella. No, also. no, no. Mm. Also, chew it's a good. No, but, chew um, no um, frutella are the best. No, they're not. Frutella are no way the best. You cannot eat. I cannot eat one frutella. I could eat the whole pack. <laughs> one go. Which is mm. a bit of a nightmare when you buy like a pack of four. <laughs> but they, they are. They look. That's a lemon one, that was really lemony. These these do taste like they used to. Mm. 
Lime worm. Okay. We like soap opera fruits again. Yeah, they're good. They're good. They're okay. Right. Mm. But for the record, Frutella are not as good as these. Oh, they are. Say. No, no, no. Right. Answers and comments. Which about better, chew it, Frutella, or opal fruit slash starburst? Settle the argument. Or a Mars bar. Oh, God. Mars bar is not the same category. That's, uh, that's apples and oranges, I'm afraid. Well, Mars bar is awesome. Mars day. Not the same thing. <laughs> Excellent singing, dear. Good morning again. I don't know why I keep saying good morning. It's the middle of the vlog for you guys, but it is a different day for me, so I guess that's why. I just wanted to follow up on some comments and things um, that I had in my rearranging the living room, like mini makeover video. Lots of good suggestions about what we can do to try and improve things. We've also got another little mini makeover project coming up that I shall tell you about now. I shall tell you about and try not to cry at the same time. It's a bit weird like that. Okay, so first of all, the living room. A lot of you suggested that we put the TV on this wall here instead of the um, current position it's in over here. Now, the main reason I think that's gonna struggle to work is just it's not gonna be big enough. That is quite a small space. So um, the size, looking at the size of the TV, it's just not gonna add up. So potentially a good idea. I know it's very difficult to just see from when you're just watching a video, like sizes and things, but I think that's not going to work. Some of you suggested we moved the TV sort of more into this corner over here. That could work, but this is the corner I was probably going to put the Christmas tree in because a lot of you are like, what are you going to do with your tree, Ray? What are you going to do with your tree? Think about these things. I have, don't panic. We normally have the Christmas tree over here and then we just budge this little sofa forward. So I'll probably just do the same thing again, to be honest. We'll have the tree here and then we can have this little sofa blocking the door because in December, we're not going to want to be using that door to go in that garden because it'll be cold. And if we did want to go out the garden, we could just use the other door in the dining room. So that's not too much of a problem. So probably I don't want to put the TV over here in the corner because I'm probably going to put the Christmas tree there. The other thing is I like the idea of having the option. I don't know if I'll do it, of swapping the sofa round to I think it was option two in the like living room switching around option um, where we kind of had it with the back to the patio doors I thought that felt really cozy really nice for snuggling up and watching tv with the children I didn't like it for the summer because I like the openness that we've got here for running in at the garden but when quite frankly it's dark and gross and then I might quite fancy swapping it to to round there um but as you saw if you watched that video where we were um well i was swapping the room around i managed to move the sofa myself so i you know i could change it twice in one day if i feel like i like the idea that i can swap things around and i'm not fully committed to having to keep the room one way because the other option when we were swapping the tv around to up there we would kind of be more stuck with our choices and I love having flexibility. I love swapping a room around and making it feel fresh. And I know it's the first time we've done it since we moved in this room, but it's just because I didn't really envisage being able to do it. So if it was too big, so I'm really pleased we've got that flexibility. Another load of you suggested we could put this TV on a hinge bracket so we could pull it round to watch it. Now that's quite a good idea. That is quite a good idea. Um, I don't want the children touching it and tugging it and things. It's a big heavy TV on the wall, but it is something that perhaps we could do. I don't think I'm going to bother getting a sofa for in here, as in an extra chair. I talked about maybe getting an extra chair for in here, but we have got another little project that I'm going to be taking on. And that is, right, I'm going to try and talk about this like and hold myself together now. So my eldest is actually going to university. Today is Thursday. I have got to take him to move into university on Saturday. My eldest, my first one, leaving home. I, kn I know he'll be back for like holidays and stuff. Hopefully he'll come back and stay every now and again. Maybe it's the children's birthdays, but I'm gonna find Saturday really, really difficult. Anyway, um, to turn it, turn it into more of a positive thing. Um, obviously it's a positive thing, don't get me wrong. I'm excited and so, so proud. Did amazingly well in his A-levels. I'm so, so proud he's got to university. So. It is, a po it's, of course it's a positive thing, but like for myself and the children, the children were very upset, understandably, that he's going. 
So um, we're going to have a bit of a switch around in what's currently his bedroom. His bedroom needs some work doing on it. It needs the lights changing like we did in here. It needs a few decor bits done. So we're gonna have a total switch around with the room and make it a multi-functional room. So when he's home, it will be a living space room in the day and a bedroom in the night. And when he is not home, it will be a living room slash playroom for the children. So the best thing to do is just come in here and show you what I'm talking about. So to be honest, this room has needed some things doing to it for a while, but while he was living here, he didn't want us fussing in here, so it's fine. We're happy. It's probably easier to, to empty the room and sort it out anyway. I must admit, I made a mistake in here as well. My husband asked me, did I want spotlights in here? I said no, I was in the living room before we moved in. He was doing up the house, and I should have just said yes to spotlights in here and just spots all the downstairs. So the spots need to go in, but in order to create some space in here, we need to empty the room. A lot of the stuff will be gone when Dylan's in university, um, and the furniture is gonna need a bit of a rejig anyway. The bed needs replacing, that's a bed. I think it's an Ikea one. It moved to like three different rooms in our old house, and now it's moved to here, and Ikea furniture's fantastic, but it doesn't move very well, so that's just needs replacing. Um, and to be honest, now that I've kind of thought about this, I kind of almost wish that I'd made it more of a multifunctional space in advance, like beforehand, this could have worked really well even when he was living at home. So what I'm gonna do is turn it into more like, um, I don't know if you've ever like, stayed in a touring caravan, years ago we used to have a touring caravan. And at the front we had a sofa bed and obviously in the day it was a sofa and in the night we pulled it out and it was a bed. So I have ordered from Next a sofa bed that is very, very similar to the sofa in our living room. So it's just grey. Um, I know I'm really pleased with it. I, I know the fabric is really, really nice and it's lasting. Really um, I did try opening it with one hand, so it's literally one hand open. So when he is home, it can have the sheet and things on the mattress and it's literally a case of throwing a duvet on to go to sleep. So when he is home, that will be like a living room in the day and then a bedroom in the night. Now, when he's not home, obviously we'll still have three children living at home it's not a big enough house to just leave his bedroom untouched. If we were still living in our old house, which was much bigger, but the location didn't suit us as well, then I would have just left his bedroom as it was because the children already had a playroom and things. However, because we're a bit more squashed in than we used to be, we're now going to turn this into, as part of the multifunctional space, a playroom for the children when Dylan is at uni. The plan is we're gonna get rid of the desk because we don't need a desk and I'll probably bring the play table in here, but then I've got the option to take the play table back out. Um, I could bring the other little sofa in. It gives me a bit more flexibility because we have got another little sofa in the dining room. The bed's going. The uh, sofa bed will be coming a week Saturday. So we've got, he's moving out on Saturday to go to university. And then we've got a week to get the lights done, possibly moving some of these calyx things around and bringing the toy kitchen into here. And then in the living room, the fire can go where the toy kitchen is. I hope you're with us here. So this is kind of the plan. And this is definitely a um, project for another vlog because I'm not touching it today. I've got work to do. But I just thought I'd kind of fill you in on the plans in here and we will be doing a bit of a room makeover. It will be a lot of toy sorting and things as well because I will be bringing some of the toy children's toys down, put them in calyx boxes in here. We can have a big old switch around and then I will be leaving space within the wardrobe for Dylan when he comes home to utilize. Um, but it's just a really good opportunity for a really big sort out and to turn him going because the little ones are really upset into a positive because they're gonna have a lovely playroom space to use when he's not here. And then when he is here, they won't have a playroom space, but they will have Dylan back. So that's my plan to turn the kind of something that's a positive thing for Dylan into also a positive for the family that's still here. So the little ones aren't quite so sad. So yeah, Dylan's room at the moment is looking quite messy. <laughs> it is quite messy because it's all like packed up with boxes and things ready to go. Now I'm only packing stuff that we already had here. I've bought one or two bits, literally one or two bits, because everything else that I've bought, I'm having delivered directly there because it's been so tempting to pick up this, pick up that, but the physical moving into halls is gonna be a little bit of a pain. You can't park by the door of the entrance. There's a car park and about probably a hundred meter walk, which doesn't seem that bad until you realize that every single extra thing I buy and bring back here or buy and have delivered here, I'm gonna to have to walk myself with him to, to like check him in. I've had the address for 
his flat in Halls and get it all delivered there. All of it. Well, almost all of it. I've, I've picked up literally one or two bits, but I really had to sit on my hands and stop myself um, and just say, look, I'll just have it delivered there because then someone else can deliver it there. I don't have to, to um, carry it. Moving him in wise, I will be doing it myself. Uh, my husband has offered to do it, but I just really feel like I want to... I just, I need to picture where he is. I know that sounds silly. I want to make sure he's settled. And I know my husband would do a fine job of settling him in. It'd be absolutely fine. But I need to know for my sanity. I need to be able to picture, although we've, we've like toured to halls before. I need to be able to picture exactly where he's living. Just for my sanity, really. And to make sure that I'm happy that he's settled. So I'm going to go up, but I'm going to take the car with all the seats flattened. With just all the boxes and stuff of his actual things that are here. That we're taking but obviously that means i i'm just going on my own with dylan um my husband is staying at home with the little ones just purely because we can't all fit and i know my husband has got a van but it's absolutely wedged full of tools and it's all like drawers and tools and things. it's just it's not a moving stuff around van it is very much a work van so that wouldn't be of any use for actually moving things so that's the plan for this weekend that and i've got a fair amount of packing still to do Let's go and check out how much of that I've got left to do. But first, I've got to grab something to eat. It's school photo day today in um, school, <laughs> obviously. Um, and we had a bit of a morning um, and I ended up not having breakfast. So I'm gonna eat one of these. I normally eat these for breakfast anyway, but I literally didn't even have time to do that this morning. Um, if you've seen my morning routine videos, we have a very well-oiled morning routine, but Sometimes the wheels come off, which is why I always allow that time at the end of our morning routine. If you've looked at the timings, there's some time after breakfast where there's like some wiggle room time where I just sort of, the, I would put on a bit of washing and the children would play for a few minutes or whatever. But this morning, there were various issues, meltdowns, whatever, that we had to contend with. And it was, of course, the day where they had to look tidy and their hair had to be really neat for school photos. So it was just one of those days. Um, so I didn't get to eat. So I'm going to eat this now. And then we're going to go and have a look at how much packing I have got left to do before we go, because we are heading to Disneyland Paris. And at the time of filming, 16 days. And as usual, I'm going to pack some of these bars, actually. I love these because they're protein bars. They're chocolatey and we all know I'm a bit of a chocoholic. But because they've packed full of protein. They actually keep me fuller for longer. I don't get the sugar crash that I would get if I just ate, you know, normal chocolate. Very quickly before we head upstairs, I wanted to show you something that is really, really, really cool. Okay, so if you have an iPhone that is an iPhone 8 or newer, you can now update to iOS 16, which is just the new updated software. But there are some really, really cool things you can do in it. Um, if you like this kind of thing, I'm a little bit of a tech geek on the buy it. And I love, especially like, iPhones and things. So I could do more tips and things either in blogs or a whole dedicated video about iPhone tips, how I use mine to stay productive, how I use mine to take nice photos, all that kind of thing. So this is really clever though. You're gonna like it. It's gonna be especially handy for me because I use this kind of thing all the time, but honestly, pretty much anyone's gonna love this. So you take a photo and this could be a photo from the internet, a photo from your phone, whatever. You press your finger on it and it's gonna do this funny did you see it kind of like did a like a like a wave over it? And I've got the option to copy it. And now I can go into say messages. I'm literally this is one where I'm messaging myself. Look, this is where <laughs> this is where I was cut doing the same thing for the opal fruits. And then you can paste it in there, but it's cut it out. Can you see? It has cut out. So the original photo looked like this, but it has cut Zara out of the background. If you're ever like a Photoshop user or whatever, having to physically cut a photo out of the background takes ages and ages. You could paste that into something. This might be good for like your children's work, school projects and things. You could paste that into a document um, or you could just paste it into like a photo collage. But honestly, really, really impressed with that um, in the new iOS 16 update. So if you are an iPhone user, make sure you have updated your phone. Actually, one more thing before we head upstairs to um, just check on some packing bits. I want to talk very quickly about my planner. If I'm honest, this last week I have been so busy, I haven't done the updates that I need to do on my planner. I was hoping to launch it before we go away. I tell you what I'll do actually, I will put the URL, I will create a landing page, I'll put the URL on the screen now. You can go to that and you can see when it's planning to launch because hopefully by the time this goes out, I will at least have 
figured out a launch date or if you're watching it a little bit further in the future then maybe it already has launched but anyway at this very moment in time it's not ready because um I've got to do some tweaks and things which shouldn't actually take me that long to when I sit down and do it so I might do that this weekend while once I've dropped my eldest in uni and um, while my husband is doing the lights it's the kind of thing that's reasonably minus I can do my laptop while the children are playing but I've got to do those tweaks but also I've got to and this is the bit that's kind of a bit more daunting I've got to set up all the kind of the back end of selling the planner because I'm publishing it myself so there's there's like three ways you can use a planner you can physically get a download print it out and write on it with a pen which is obviously the easiest everyone can do that that will be quite easy to do but still I've got to be able to set up the shop so you could go to my website click on it and then you would pay for it and it would get downloaded so I've got to set that up so that works um then the second option is you download it and you use it like I do on an iPad so you would physically write on it you can write you know to whatever or you could write you could, the, the way I like to do it actually is um you can use the text function so you can write on it like that and it just appears like I'm not sure if you can see that very well but um so I've got to set up a way that people can download and pay for that but also then instructions of how people can import it to their iPad and use it because it's super easy to do when you know how but obviously I understand that people might need a little bit of help um, figuring out how to do that. Then of course there's the third option which is the printed planner which might sound the simplest to use and perhaps is the simplest to use but it's perhaps the most complicated for me to deliver. So with the printed version um, whoever it was would log on to my website and click to buy it and then that would send a notification to the publishers to print one and send it directly to the person's home. So I've got to figure out how to set up the logistics of all that. So I've got to set up a Shopify store, link that with the publishers, integrate all that with my website and make all that work. Now I'm reasonably tech savvy in that I do stuff with my own website. Um, you know, obviously I like write blog posts and things, but then the back end stuff is, I don't know, I, um, I find it a bit more daunting because I just don't do it that much. So I still haven't done all that just because I've had so much on with work trying to get ahead um trying to get all the work done that I haven't been able to do over the summer because the children have been home and do all the work that I can't do while we're away so just getting all that ready so hopefully I know I'm so grateful for all your support I know a lot of you are like when is it coming out when's it coming out I was really hoping it's going to be before we go away and quite frankly at this point it might still be at this point it might still be it might even be live by the time you watch this video whenever that is so check out that landing page I will put updates on there but the, I don't I don't know exactly when it's going to be live but I really am so grateful for all the people the messages I've had saying that they're excited for it um the support means means so much um I'm really pleased with how it is working in my day-to-day -day life um the biggest thing is that like, part of me wants to keep tweaking it until it's perfect and I know nothing in life can ever really be perfect so it's gonna have to get to a stage where I just press, press publish and hope that it works for everybody and then perhaps we'll do a second updated edition Obviously with the digital ones, it's quite straightforward. I could update that at any time and resend those out to people that had bought um, if there are like slight, slight tweaks to be made. Um, but yeah, it's just a little bit paralysis by analysis and wanting it to be perfect and not wanting to press go until it's perfect. But then part of me just wants to give myself a good old like, stop it, re slap, get on with it, get it out there into the world. So that's where I'm at with that. Hopefully it will be not too long. Really hope I can, it can be before we go away but then equally I don't want to launch it just before we go away and then if anyone has like I don't know if there are any road bumps tech issues um with it you know like the website or whatever say so I I'm not going to know if there are any hiccups the website and how it works until I launch it so perhaps launching it just before I go away is a bit silly because I can't deal with those tech issues from that point of view I should launch it after we get back so that I'm actually here and with it wi-fi access to deal with any technical issues that may occur okay now let's go and um pop some of those bits that I've got um, upstairs ready for uh, the final bits of packing. So packing wise, I have been packing on and off. I mean, on and off for ages. I start with packing with just gathering bits and pieces in baskets weeks and weeks before a trip. And I'd highly recommend if you are going on a trip that is of a different season, like say now you're going for like winter sun, just pack the stuff that you're gonna need for that trip, just stick it straight in a suitcase, just out of the way and just gather it all together. So I've been gathering things for a while and then a couple of weeks ago, I sort of started really packing properly because I've been doing it over the course of like a few weekends to sort of lower 
the pressure of getting it all done all in one go because even though there were only five of us not six was going there's still quite a lot of stuff to remember we are just doing carry on cabin cases again like we did on the last trip that worked really really well we don't have to wait around for bags it was lovely um so we're gonna do that again um i have got the backpack my husband is going to carry i've been gathering together all our documents i have all of our documents saved electronically on my phone but also um in here with the passport so this is like a little passport wallet things all our passport kept safely in there as well as some other documents um but i've also got printouts of all of our documents and things that we need to take now the biggest difference i'd say for this trip is i am going to be using my monzo card um, I only recently got, that's upside down, <laughs> I only recently got one of these since the last trip after so many people recommended them. I was literally going to use it just for being abroad, but I thought I'd give it a go in this country to see how I liked it really. This isn't an ad by the way, um, this is just something I've been using myself. However, if you want to try Monzo and use the link on screen, you will get five pounds added to your account when you make your first transaction and I will get the same. So it's not technically an ad, it's more like a private consumer referral thing, but just wanna just be totally transparent that both you and I would benefit if you do that. So full disclosure. Um, anyway, the Monzo, so it's it's a debit card, not a credit card. So I wouldn't want to book holidays on it or anything, as in pay for things online, because credit cards give you extra protection, don't they? Um, so like, I'm not a financial expert or anything, take fina like financial advice from a financial advisor, but this is just like from my experience. So I'm gonna be using this for like face-to-face -face transactions as opposed to booking things that I may want to ever get um credit card protection on so i've been using this for face-to-face -face transactions things like buying things in the co-op or when i've been shopping in primark or whatever in this country and i'm going to use it for face-to-face -face transactions when we go away to avoid the big my biggest draw for it was to avoid having um currency conversion fees added because normally i use my credit card because i always think it's always been in the back of my mind it's safe to use credit card safe to use credit card but really for face to face things like you've had the thing haven't you like credit card clawback stuff's more like if you're ordering something it doesn't show up whereas if i'm buying something in a shop then i'm quite happy to use the card i don't like carrying cash i just feel like if cash is gone cash is gone whereas a card you've got a bit of protection you can cancel it if it goes missing but it doesn't have currency exchange fees that's the biggest biggest draw to it but the other thing i quite like it's got these pots so you can put money aside in pots so you can put aside money for eating out or groceries or fuel or whatever and you can put them into these different pots you can lock a pot till a certain time so a certain date so i've put money for spending money for our trip and i've locked that pot until the date of our trip and then i can access that money again so that we can you know use it for spending money on the trip so it's a good way of budgeting and allocating the other thing i really like on it is and i've um i normally with my normal bank i'd get like a notification saying you've just spent this much money in the co-op so i'd get that anyway but with this it feels more like app that developed a bank than a bank that developed an app if that makes sense so like the app is really good and then they turned it into a bank even though it's a proper bank um but when so say for example you nip to a few shops so say you go to you go to tesco's and then you go to sainsbury's and then you go to Asda. i don't know why i do that but if you say you did that it would you come out of one it would say right you have spent so much in tesco today and then you the second one it would be like you've just spent this much in sainsbury's you've spent this much in total today and this much in total this month on groceries or whatever and it just gives you really good insights into your spending so it makes you think oh it's not just the five pounds i've just spent in this shop if i add up everything i've spent in total today and it kind of just keeps you spending front of mind and it helps you kind of budget and be more aware because you know knowledge is power so so far really really pleased with that if you are going abroad um they're free to, there are upgraded accounts you can have you can have extra perks and things i've just got the basic free one um so if you want to um check out monzo use the link on screen and you will get five pounds and so will i um so yeah that's main sort of big difference with how we're kind of managing our trip this time is just how i will be doing the spending money really um, other than that, obviously we're going for Halloween season, which we've not done a Disney Halloween season before. Um, if you're into Disney stuff, make sure you are following me over on My Mummy of Four Does Disney channel. Um, so now I'm just going to check through a few of these bits. I'm not sure if I'm going to finish packing today, but I just know I had 
a few bits I wanted to kind of add to the pile, but I am filming a full come pack with me for this Disney trip. So if you like come pack with me videos, then click up here for come pack with me. If you're not into packing, then you can just click down here for another like little weekly vlog. So it's packing or do you like vlogs? Do you like packing or vlogs? Or I mean, the, the packing is kind of a vlog. It's up to you. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.